This is the Insurance Law Podcast, brought to you by Best Recommended Insurance Attorneys. Welcome to the Insurance Law Podcast, the broadcast about timely and important legal issues affecting the insurance industry. I'm John Zuba, Managing Editor of Best Recommended Insurance Attorneys, including expert service providers. We're pleased to have with us today Dan Thompson, President and CEO of DG Rehabilitation Technologies with offices in Ontario and Arizona. Dan has worked with the litigation arena for over 12 years. He is a registered rehabilitation professional, registered vocational professional, and certified life care planner. His company's services include providing expert opinion to insurance carriers, attorneys, and medical professionals by assessing the needs and vocational capabilities for people with disabilities. And Dan, we're very pleased to have you with us again today. Thank you very much for having me, John. Today's topic is the anticipation of changes to the health care industry and Obamacare and the potential impact in both the United States and Canada. And Dan, uh, starting out, what impact do you anticipate to health care after this year's election results in particular? Well, obviously, uh, uh, the GOP, of course, has made uh, uh, remarks that they're going to make sweeping changes to Obamacare. And, of course, uh, you know, that repeal that they've uh, proposed to implement is going to have some impacts. Uh, for example, right now you've got over 30 million Americans who are uh, enlisted in the existing program. Uh, they can't just uh, cancel it all together because, obviously, they would have a, uh, you know, millions of people who would be affected by that. Uh, on the same breath, uh, they only own 51 seats in the Senate. So as such, any repeal or any changes that they're going to implement uh, would have to have at least some cross-party uh, cooperation you know, from the uh, Democrats. Otherwise, I can see it easily being vetoed, or uh, uh, should I say uh, they might end up in the filibuster. So I, I think the impact they're going to have is that they're, they're going to have to... Uh, have a fine line, I guess, between ensuring that they can maintain coverage uh, and yet repeal the act as such that uh, uh, it has less impact on those that are already covered. And what changes do you foresee with Obamacare in particular? Well, uh, in essence, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, Trump has touted is that uh, uh, he has indicated that, uh, for example, uh, Medicaid, which is uh, run by each state, and uh, provides health care coverage for those that normally can't afford it, for those that are not on an insurance policy through their employer. Um, uh, he has indicated that uh, he would give money directly to the states and allow them to uh, implement that as opposed to going with the fee-for-service structure that they have in place. So I can see that as being perhaps one of the changes that are in there. As it relates to the insurance industry, John, um, uh, one of the things that, of course, from the defense perspective uh, that's been implemented is that uh, if, of course, if one has coverage, then, um, you know, in essence, uh, how much should they be able to uh, have that coverage from there? And then what is the exposure of the insurance companies based on that? And that's hence where the collateral source rule comes into place. And I think that still has to be uh, teased out or, or vetted, but I can see that as being one of the major areas where, where there's going to be changes and, you know, how that impact is going to play out. The problem being is that, of course, each state implements their own structure um, and their own set of rules, and so I guess it's still to be determined as to, you know, what all those changes would be. And Dan, how closely is Canada watching, and do the changes in the U.S. Uh, impact Canada at all? Well, obviously, being uh, each other's largest trading partners, Canada, of course, is always going to be watching. And uh, uh, I really can't see there being too much of an impact on the Canadian health care system. Uh, for example, our OHIP program has been in place. That's the Ontario Health Insurance Program, our plan. That has been in place since uh, 1967, if memory serves. And uh, in essence, if anything, our, our plan has expanded to offer more services for Ontarians. So I can't see that uh, changing too, too much. However, there, I was listening to a program the other day, and uh, one of the uh, arguments that they made was that they could see some uh, politician capitalizing on the fact that uh, obviously Trump and, and the GOP wants to appeal Obamacare or appeal the Affordable Health Care Act, and as such, uh, somebody may want to try to blow up the system or at least make that proposal and show that the private sector could run it. Uh, the problem being there's been enough surveys and studies done that shows that a social health care uh, 
network is sort of the best coverage because uh, I guess one of the risks that GOP uh, inherit as well is that if you have the insurance company who is fortifying this coming from the private sector, how then can the government legislate what exactly they can cover and what they can't cover? So as such, there may be insurance companies that pull out of certain regions uh, to, again, uh, you know, offer some exposure there of people that just won't have coverage. So I just can't see that uh, becoming a huge impact in Canada. How about the attorneys you work with? What are some of the differences uh, between the U.S. and Canadian attorneys regarding the health? Well, I mean, you still have problem solving. In other words, John, you've got someone who's had an injury, um, and as a result of those injuries, can they work, or what type of uh, goods and services are they going to need going forward? Uh, The question then becomes, which goes back to our earlier questions, is that what coverages are in place from other sources, i.e., uh, you know, it, it will the Affordable Health Care Act cover, say, items X, Y, and Z? So, in other words, will there be hospital coverages through your plan? Will you be able to get your medications covered through your plan? And then, as such, uh, working with those attorneys and looking at the laws in each particular state or each particular province uh, will dictate then where that, uh, as I call it, the surplus or, or the overages above and beyond you know, what coverages they have, and that's where the exposure of the insurance company comes in and how much they're going to pay. So, for example, even though we have uh, what Americans would tout as universal health care here in Ontario, you still have excess attendant care that could be exposed to the insurance company. You would still have things like van modifications or housing modifications, which can be covered by certain government programs, but for the most part, that's where um, the life care plan uh, would come into play to provide that sort of coverage. So uh, the, the big difference, I would say, between the U.S. and the Canadian attorneys is that uh, depending on the state or depending on the jurisdiction in which they're in, what coverages do they have, and then what exposure uh, you know, does the insurance offer to cover that surplus. So then, and how do the insurance laws impact the health profession in both countries, and are there advantages to one over the other in your assessment? Well, I think here in Canada, obviously, I think there's huge advantages in the fact that uh, um, a lot of Americans don't even get, uh, you know, health care because in their perception, they can't afford it. Now, of course, any American could go into uh, an emergency room tomorrow and receive care and and make sure that they uh, get the coverage that they need. However, here in Ontario or here in uh, Canada in particular, uh, you're going to be able to uh, get the coverage you need. There may be longer wait lines and things of that through the government-run system. On the same breath, though, um, you don't have to lose your savings and, in essence, potentially go bankrupt with the potential costs. So, as an example, even an overnight stay in the hospital could cause cost someone as much as $20,000, as I'm sure you appreciate, John, if I uh, don't have a lot of disposable income, obviously that's going to deter me from even getting the care we need. Hence, if they don't get the proper screenings, for example, they don't get PSA tests or uh, uh, things for the prostate uh, or, or other areas, that's going to affect them long term. So I think overall here in Canada, because Canadians have readily available health care available to them. Uh, in essence, I think that the, uh, they probably are healthier, or at least in terms of the, um, the lower margin of the people that you know, don't have a lot of this disposable income would be a healthier population in general. So at this point, how do you see the future of life care planners and vocational experts? Well, I, I, see, uh, I see this as being a huge opportunity. Um, in essence, uh, 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 life care planners, by their very nature, um, you know, were basically set up by the plaintiff bar. It was a way to show the courts as to what means analysis are there for an individual for goods and services. So from defense perspective, uh, assuming I'm retained by the defense, uh, in essence, they need someone to offer checks and balances, someone who's going to be able to uh, say that, yes, indeed, uh, or, or provide that acid test to show that, uh, yes, uh, providing 24-hour care is reasonable or it's not, uh, showing that, yes, indeed, this person does need modifications or workplace accommodations, uh, the whole bit. So I, I see, obviously, uh, as a, a dovetail or as an adjunct to the potential changes that may be put in by the Trump administration, I would say that uh, uh, we as life care planners and we as vocational 
vocational experts uh, are going to be in more demand as time goes on to provide that expertise to help attorneys steer their ship uh, uh, to come up with a reasonable solution. Dan, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. That was Dan Thompson, President and CEO of DG Rehabilitation Technologies with offices in Arizona and Ontario. And special thanks to today's producer, Frank Vowinkle. And thank you all for joining us for the Insurance Law Podcast. To subscribe to this audio program, go to iTunes or our webpage, www.ambest.com slash claims resource. If you have any suggestions for a future topic regarding an insurance law case or issue, please email us at lawpodcast.ambest.com. I'm John Zuba, and now this message. Best Insurance Professionals and Claims Resource is the top website for locating qualified professionals and need-to-know insurance information for the claims market. Brought to you by AM Best, the world leader in insurance industry information. Visit ambest.com slash claims resource.